Athens has been the capital of Greece since 1834 and is widely known for its long history. The first signs of Jewish presence date back to the first century. However, little is known about the history of Athenian Jewry until the 19th century. The first Jews in the Greek state settled in Athens in the 1830s with the arrival of the Bavarian king Otto. Gradually and steadily, the Jewish presence in the capital of Greece grew throughout the 19th century. In the interwar period, the now called Israelite community of Athens started to flourish, numbering almost 3,000 people before the war, with two synagogues, a cemetery, and a public elementary school in Petralona. Petralona was a neighborhood where a number of Jewish families lived, near the synagogue and the school. During the Second World War, Athens came to be in the Italian zone of occupation and hence became a sort of refuge for persecuted Jews from the Bulgarian and German occupation zones. Almost another 3,000 Jews managed to hide in Athens. After the Italian capitulation, however, the persecution of Jews found in Athens also started. In March 1944, over 800 Jews from all over Greece were arrested by the Germans after they had been called at the synagogue under false pretenses. These 800, along with another 200, who were arrested in roundups from late 1943 till the summer of 1944, were deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Here we are in the Holocaust Memorial in Athens. This memorial, actually, it's a symbol of Magen David, showing uh, in each of, uh, of, the, uh, of the stones, there are the names of the cities where uh, Jews have been extorted. Here we have on the 27th of January, every January, it's the Holocaust Remembrance Day. Where we had a lot of uh, ministers, we had a lot of ambassadors, we had the president, Ms. Mrs. Katerina Sakelaropoulou. She honored us with her presence. Another thing that especially this year has happened, is that both in the parliament and on the municipality uh, central building, uh, the We Remember sign has been uploaded and uh, this has created much more awareness than uh, any other similar occasions in the past. The Jewish communities of Greece were the communities that suffered a lot through the Holocaust. Um, one of the highest percentages of loss throughout Europe is here in Greece. The Holocaust is a big part of the identity of the Jewish communities. Not the only identity, but is a very, uh, is a very important aspect. As an artist, I have a um, very varied and mixed relationship with my Jewish identity. At the beginning in my work, um, the Jewish heritage, the culture and the religion was not, were not incorporated. Um, but finally, uh, what I try to convey uh, is the relationship of the past, between the past, the uh, present and the future, uh, thus preserving my two heritages, the Greek and uh, the Jewish. So my work um, is focused on uh, issues over the past uh, two decades, since uh, the 90s. Uh, is focused on uh, issues of uh, pain and loss, trauma, um, the shared reality of war and pe persecution, actually. And um, uh, you can see that uh, I confronted the trauma of the, of the Holocaust through a children's game, the marionettes, the world of uh, the marionettes. That was for me the most appropriate, the most personal, the least traumatic, I could say, way of confronting with uh, this uh, historical chapter of the Shoah. I come from a family, many of whose members were perished in the Nazi concentration camps. So after some of my relatives passed away, I felt the moral obligation uh, to confront this issue, the chapter of the Holocaust, uh, directly. You can see here, next to the photograph 
uh, of uh, the person, of the survivor, I juxtapose one of my artworks, a little house that's a symbol of the hearth they left behind, of the love of their beloved ones, of their countries, even their languages that they lost when they emigrated after the war to other countries. It's also, uh, it stands also as a symbol of the life they started anew after the war. Sammy Modiano, a survivor I met in Rhodes in 2015, uh, said to me while I was interviewing, this is my mission. For as long as he, God, will give me the strength to convey to humanity, uh, to narrate, to teach, to write about what has happened to me, to us, to all of us. So the words we remember never again, do not let the world forget, are some of the words of the messages that the survivors bequeath to us a sacred heritage. After the Shoah, Athens became the Jewish center of the country, where the largest community resided, numbering almost 5,000 people. This number was further reduced due to immigration to the State of Israel and to the United States. The Jewish community of Athens uh, comprises of uh, around three and a half thousand members. Uh, everybody is scattered throughout Attica. It's, uh, Attica is around four and a half million, five, uh, five million people. Uh, uh, so, and the Jewish population is uh, scattered to north, south, and the city center. Uh, here, we're in the city center, where all the Jewish uh, quarter, uh, major uh, buildings are, uh, are domiciled. The Jewish community uh, here in our city uh, is a very interesting community, uh, mainly of Sephardic and Romani Jews, Greek Jews. Uh, the Jewish community is uh, an Orthodox community, though the people are more traditional. Um, but we, we all gather together, we all celebrate together, we all pray together, secular and religious, traditional. We're all united under the same umbrella, which is called the Jewish community of uh, each city. Here, the Jewish community of Athens. Uh, we have two synagogues, one Sephardic and one Greek, one Romaniot. Both synagogues, of course, are open on high holidays. That is the peak of the uh, attendance. We have a Jewish school, we have a JCC, a community cultural center, uh, we have the synagogues, we have a cemetery, we have some real estate that brings us income, uh, the welcoming committee, fundraising activities, the welfare, which is a very, very important part of our uh, community, of our activities, to to, to take care of our needy and of, of our less fortunate. We don't feel different. We feel part of the, so, of the Athenian society. Uh, I think it's the same in all over Greece. Uh, we feel part of the society. Actually, uh, we all have uh, non-Jewish friends. Probably the majority of our friends are non-Jewish. Uh, we all go to non-Jewish high schools. Therefore, our classmates are in their majority non-Jewish. Uh, we work in non-Jewish environments, mostly. Even if we're in, in a Jewish environment, we still uh, work with non-Jewish uh, people. Uh, I think we are very much incorporated in the Athenian and Greek society as a whole. Uh, one of the challenges is uh, um, living the religion, religion for a more secularized, society. Uh, intermarriage is also a big issue. Um, the numbers that are going down, uh, more deaths, less births. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, anti-Semitism is part of that challenge. Due to my role, I have been uh, 
I have uh, been aware of uh, many incidents anti-Semitic. anti-Semitic. Uh, we have vandalism in, uh, in the cemeteries. Uh, there are in uh, different schools, there are uh, incidents on the educational part. Uh, that we are aware of. When I was a kid, I was studying at the conservatorium, uh, the flute, and I met a kid, I was about 10 years old, and uh, he said, uh, why your name is Tali? What does it mean? I said, it's uh, Dew in Hebrew. He said, what's Hebrew? I said, I'm Jewish, so Hebrew. And uh, the kid said, Jewish? My mother said that uh, the Jews are with two heads. So this was my first shock because as I was in a Jewish family and in the Jewish school, I never ever had such an experience before. Currently, my kids also that are going to schools, they experience such similar incidents. Uh, you know, the stereotypes, uh, you Jews go and become soaps and all these terrible things that the kids, I'm sure, have no idea what they are talking about or they draw swastikas, or even they wave at uh, Heil Hitler. And uh, the schools don't know how to deal with these things uh, efficiently. Uh, they definitely need the assistance of the Jewish Museum of Greece, of us. We are here to help them. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, if there is a professor, a professor in every school that is responsible to deal with Holocaust matters and anti-Semitism and is educated uh, through the Jewish Museum of Greece and even go to Yad Vashem or Auschwitz or wherever to get the proper education, then we can hope that things will be a little bit better also at the schools and therefore at uh, the Greek society as a whole. Anti-Semitism may have been delegitimized since the Second World War, but it never ceased to exist. For example, the fabricated anti-Semitic text, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion, have been published in Greece several times since their first publication in the interwar period. The Protocols of the Elders of Zion is probably the most well-known anti-Semitic publication of modern times. The lies it contains have ever since been disproven again and again, however, they are still being spread today, especially online. A common purpose seems to link all individuals and groups using the protocols to spread rumors and hatred against Jews. In October 2012, the ex-Golden Dawn MP, Ilias Kassidiaris, actually quoted an expert from the protocols in the plenary session of the Greek parliament. However, the protocols remain popular among supporters of conspiracy theories, irrespective of their political affiliation. Extreme right-wing newspapers actually found the opportunity during the pandemic to promote anti-Semitic stereotypes and trivialize the Holocaust. A characteristic example is the front page of the newspaper Makelio in November 2020, when the mass production of a vaccine was closed. Popular or Latin anti-Semitism can be found in several places. A characteristic example of this is the tradition of the burning of Judas, a tradition according to which an effigy of Judas is burned on Good Friday. The Greek Orthodox Church has actually condemned it in the early 20th century, but still exists today. And last but not least, we should mention the vandalization and desecration of Jewish monuments and synagogues and cemeteries, which are, are not a rare occurrence in Greece, unfortunately. Uh, more focus has to be given to the younger ages uh, on anti-racism and, uh, uh, and uh, being educated more and more on the Holocaust, genocides that, uh, uh, that needs to be uh, known, understand uh, what were their causes and uh, the uniqueness of the Holocaust in general. The Jewish Museum of Greece was founded 45 years ago. It is a, a historical and ethnographic museum uh, that covers the history and tradition of the Greek Jews from late antiquity in the end of the fourth century before Common Era right through to our days. 
It is a historical and ethnographic museum with rich collections. It is also a research center um, that strives to put out there its results in all the traditional ways to a museum and also many online applications. The museum receives between 10 and 12,000 visitors per year, many of whom are school children. Um, its basic aim is to inform about the history and tradition of the Greek Jews, but it also uses its rich and varied collections and archival materials to speak about humanistic subjects, such as uh, teach about the Holocaust and talk about intercultural and interreligious education. I think that uh, what needs to be done to raise awareness of Jewish life in Greece and of the Holocaust is already being done, so I would say we need more of that uh, in more places, in more opportunities, so more people can take advantage of them. Um, education, education, education. That is the big word here. It's of huge importance that we continue and expand um, uh, disseminating accurate information and activities that through varied ways, even fun ways, can help people discover who were the Greek Jews, where they came from, when, where they settled, what was their life here in Greece, what were their contributions to Greek society, um, and to find out all the elements that comprise um, their identity, which is um, music, um, proverbs, fairy tales, clothing, food, cooking, all these aspects are um, all dealt within the museum and put out there through its programs. And we feel taking advantage of them is a great way to learn more about the Greek Jews um, and to become aware of what happened in the war years and during the Holocaust. It was three and a half years that made a huge difference to the Jews of Europe and of Greece, of course, but there was life rich and varied before that and after that.